this administration has initiated uh, the most important uh, use of social science evidence to make policy, I think, of any other administration. Um, so it's a very, very important thing. It's little noticed, as many important things often are. Uh, so I decided I'd write a book about it. Uh, and I've been working on this for since 2009 when I first found out about these initiatives. Uh, and uh, we did 135 interviews of people in the Congress, people in the administration, child advocates, researchers, uh, all about these six evidence-based initiatives that, uh, uh, that the administration is now carrying out. All of them are now in the field. There are something like close to 700 projects that are being funded by these initiatives. Almost all of them have, have good, uh, often random assignment evaluations. Uh, so the book uh, has a simple structure. The introduction talks about why we need evidence and what the promise of evidence is uh, with a special attention to the use of randomized controlled tr trials as a way to establish the best evidence. And then there's six chapters in, in, in a row, e one each uh, devoted to each of the six evidence-based initiatives and then a final chapter with conclusions uh, and prospects for the future. I came to Washington three decades ago uh, with the intent of being here one year. I was on a one-year fellowship, and I was going to go back to university and write the definitive book about the use of social science research in the formulation of public policy, especially social policy for children. Uh, that, as I say, that was 30 years ago. I, it didn't work out the way I planned. Uh, I wound up staying and working with the Ways and Means Committee for many years, and then I was in the White House. Um, but I still retain the desire to say more about how we can improve public policy for children. So uh, getting a little bit old, uh, I left the Congress and went to the Brookings Institution. And I've been here at Brookings for the last 14 years, working on various aspects of policy and social science research. And then uh, in 2009, I wrote a policy brief about uh, something I found out the new, then new Obama administration was doing uh, on a very important program called home visiting in which uh, usually nurses but sometimes social workers visit mothers usually, sometimes both parents, sometimes fathers, in their home beginning either during the pregnancy or sometimes following the pregnancy and sometimes both. Um, so I wrote a brief about called something like uh, the adventures of the Obama administration in uh, establishing this important initiative because it really was amazing all the fights that they had and the advocates got involved. The advocates didn't like the way the president was going to do it, but they liked the president because he's a Democrat and he's going to spend more money. They like that. Uh, so they didn't want to criticize him too much, but boy, they sure were opposed. And then uh, some gurus from the academic world also criticized their approach. So the administration had to be light on its feet. Uh, and I wrote this 3,000-word uh, policy brief. And a good friend of mine that I'd known for many years at the Office of Management Budget uh, called me up and said, hey, let's have lunch. I want to talk to you about this paper you did. Well, the reason she wanted to have lunch is because she was in the heart of all these other initiatives, and OMB played the major leadership role, and she wanted to be sure that I knew that there were six initiatives uh, and that they were roughly similar uh, to the home visiting initiative. And she thought it would be interesting for people to know more about that. Well, I immediately had the idea, I'm going to write a book about this. So um, it turned out that the Grant Foundation was, uh, had a, a program of giving grants having to do with evidence-based uh, research. So I got a grant from them and spent the next almost over four years uh, working, doing all these interviews and writing the book. Well, there was, whenever you do anything with the Congress and act, how actual legislation passes, it's always surprising. Nowadays, it's surprising if anything even passes. Uh, but I think there were several aspects of the, of the fight to pass the legislation uh, that, that were interesting. One thing was uh, the tremendous commitment by people in the White House, and especially at the Office of Management Budget, to, and Budget, the President's Domestic Policy Council as well, and how much time they spent making sure, meeting with staff members up there, meeting with members in some cases, members of the House and Senate, 
to discuss uh, these initiatives, to impress upon them as part of the president's agenda, uh, and to get them through Congress, which at that time uh, was controlled by Democrats, both the House and the Senate. Uh, so that was one thing, that a tremendous effort that the administration put into this. And then uh, when they, once they had passed and they started uh, implementing the initiatives and the agency spent a lot of time working on exactly how to write the request for proposals so people would know how to apply for the uh, for the grant funds um, and there was really striking cooperation uh, between between the career civil servants and uh, and political appointees which having been in an administration having been on the hill for many years in both Republican and Democratic administrations, I can tell you that often there is a lot of heat uh, between the career staffers in an agency and the p political appointees in the agency and in the White House who sometimes work together. And the, all six of these initiatives involved a lot of interaction between the Austin Management Budget, sometimes the White House, and the political appointees in the agencies and career uh, appointees or career uh, officials in the agency. So that was another, um, it was amazing to me how smoothly that went. And I think it was because people at OMB really knew what they wanted and they, they were wise in the way they approached using both their own political appointees in the department, but also meeting with and uh, keeping the career civil servants uh, happy about what was doing. And I also think it helped that the career civil servants believe strongly in what the administration was doing. They believe that evidence and using evidence to develop policies is a good idea, so they were all in on this. So that was the second thing that was really surprising. Another thing was that the president himself was, especially at the very beginning, was directly involved, uh, made a very important decision about one of the initiatives, which was called investing in innovation, uh, in, a, um, in a meeting in the White House, in the Oval Office, or in the uh, yeah, in the Oval Office with several of his top advisors. And he made what I would call a political decision that was against what a, what a politician might do. And that was that he decided to take the evidence-based route by using grants that would go to the best competition uh, and the best applications rather than a formula grant which would give money to every state. That's politicians love that. They want to give something to everybody uh, because it's easier for them than to get reelected. Whereas if there's competition, some people lose out. Uh, and the president said that these are going to be competitive grants. That was really an important moment because all six of them are competitive grants and you can't get the best people from the field to implement the programs unless the grants are competitive. So those are several things. There are many others, but those are uh, three things that surprised me. I think the most interesting thing is, is the use of evidence to play such an important role in policy. During my time in Washington, I would say that evidence was a little, if you had a pie chart with all the influences on the formulation of public policy, evidence would get a little teeny sliver. But in all six of these initiatives, evidence was right at the heart of it. It was the biggest piece of the pie. It was exactly, precisely the attempt to put evidence in the driver's seat because people can't get money from any of these grant programs unless what they want to do is supported by strong evidence. And not only that, but then they have to generate evidence their own through careful evaluation of the program. So that's the single most important thing. That's the thing that needs to continue. And frankly, I think that is the route to solving some of the nation's most important social problems that we insist on spending our money on programs that have strong evidence of success and that we use evidence to develop new programs as well.